I have a uh, general <coughs> understanding sometimes about the concept of being in two different realities at the mm -hmm. same time, being in an out of body experience as well as having a conversation. Mm -hmm. How does that experience work? Uh, is it like you go out of body but you join in back in the conversation the next moment or it, does it come back mm -hmm. as a memory? I can give you a metaphor for it that makes it easy. Uh, you just are you're just accepting two data streams at the same time, or you're switching back and forth between the data streams very quickly. It's really more like the way it works, and it's very much like having a picture in a picture. So if you go some you know, let's say you go into a a sports bar where they have a whole bunch of TVs up behind the bar, and each one is on a different channel. Okay, so you're looking up there and there's five TVs and they're all on different channels. They all have different games, sports things going on. Well, that's not a problem. The first time you look at it, it's kind of confusing. But after you sit there a while and you get used to the idea, you can keep track of all five games. You know what's going on in all of them. But you you don't know, you're not as solidly connected to any one of them but you're sort of connected to all five of them. Matter of fact, if there's five of them, then each one of them has your focus. So you can think of that as like your parallel processing. You're spending a little time here, a little time in each one, and you're kind of cycling through all five of them. So you spend 20% here, 20% there, 20% there, and all five of them make 100%. So you are able to keep up with all five games at the level of about 20% of what's going on. <clears throat> well, for most games and most things in life, 20% is enough. If you track 20% of a game, you can keep up with it. You know what's going on because there's a lot of downtime. There's a lot of people walking around in the field, you know, a lot of time waiting for penalties. There's, a, there's just a lot of time that nothing spectacular is happening. And if you hear a lot of noise coming from one rather than another, like the crowd starting to cheer someone and your attention can shoot over there, to see what's going on at that spot. So it's very much like that. You just parallel processing or fast serial processing um, more than one data stream at a time. So you can, you know, you can add data streams to your capacity to process. So it's pretty easy to process too. You know, if you're sitting there and you had two games on side by side, that'd be pretty easy. You could be at least 50% on both. 50%. Those databases are available for your queries at any time. So as you're having conversations with people, you can be getting pertinent data out of the database at the same time. But eventually, it's not like doing two separate things. It's not like I'm either here or I'm there. It's just not like, well, I'm here in this reality, I'm there in that reality. You're just in both realities. And it's not even that the two things are separate and you're just jumping between them, but that you really live in a bigger reality that contains all of that. So they kind of meld together eventually. It starts out as here and there, and they're separate. Then it starts out as here and there, but you're getting both streams at once. And then it eventually turns into just it's there. It's all there. So you live in a bigger space. You get more data. And you know, that's just typical as you grow up. When you're three years old, you have very limited understanding, very limited data stream. You don't know the whys of things. You don't know the hows of things. Everything's just kind of magic and mysterious, and it just is, and you don't question it. But eventually, you add more and more to that as you grow up. And pretty soon, you're handling lots of data, and you're juggling lots of things in your life all at the same time. It's the same thing. It's just the next step of growing up. You get to do the same thing. Your reality gets bigger, and there's just more information in it that you deal with as part of your reality. So then it's not really a separate thing. You just live in a bigger reality than somebody that doesn't have that. Just like a you know a 10-year-old lives in a bigger reality than a three-year-old, and an adult lives in a bigger reality than a 10-year-old. They just have more connections to more things and are able to process a whole lot more 
understand. So it's just, you know, we talk about growing up. It really is just growing up. And as you grow up, your reality gets bigger. Your choice set gets bigger. Your decision space, the amount of choices you have get bigger. Because now you can talk with a person and you can be aware of their emotional state, their health state, you know, their spiritual state. Uh, that gives you a much fuller picture of that person. So you can interact with them much more effectively. You can help them much more effectively. Now, again, if you have the wrong reasons, if you're just a voyeur checking out, you know, well, is that, you know, do I have a higher spiritual quality than the other person? Let me check it out, you see. That's just ego. And if you're doing this stuff with ego, then what will happen is you may learn to do it a little bit, but eventually it will go away and you won't be able to do it anymore. Because the little bit that it started with was to help you grow. But if you abuse it, it tends to disappear. So that's the thing. You have, that's why the why is important. Remember I said earlier, you really need to know why you're doing it. Because if the why is ego-based, it's not going to go very far and it isn't going to work very well. It has to be other-based. The system is about lowering entropy. The system is about growing up. And if you're not on that path, if you're on the path of fear and ego and belief, the system isn't going to try to support you to evolving. So they want you to evolve. They want you to grow up and evolve. So that's why you need a good working relationship with the system. I think I mentioned that earlier, too. People might think, well, what's that about? Well, it just means that you're authentic, trying to learn and grow, and the system will help you as it can. It won't make choices for you. It won't keep you from making mistakes because you need those mistakes to learn. It's not going to, you know, always protect you and do things for you. The whole point is you have to be here in the world, make your own choices, learn from the feedback you get from those choices. So it doesn't interfere in that sense, but it will give you the things you need just as you need them. You know, the things you need to understand, the insights you have to have, the, the data is required to help somebody. Then there it is, just as you need it. So it doesn't overwhelm you, it opens up as you get ready. As you get ready, yeah, it doesn't overwhelm you. Sure, if you took a three-year-old and gave them all the input that adult gets, they wouldn't know what to do with it. They would be totally overwhelmed. They'd probably just shut down, you know, and wouldn't, wouldn't interact. <clears throat> no, it doesn't overwhelm you because you slowly grow into a bigger world. Matter of fact, if you limit yourself just to the smaller world, it's, it's kind of a shadow of a bigger existence. You know, if, a, if an adult just, just saw the things and, and thought the thoughts that a three-year-old would think, you'd feel very limited. It's the same sort of thing. I love that metaphor of... Um multiple TV screen in the background. Mm -hmm. so, so it's kind of like if you are not ready for it, you might not even notice those multiple screens. But if then you're ready, you can manage looking okay. at that. Right. And at first you're confused, but it, you grow, you go to, to do the processing. And as you get more able through practice to do the processing, it becomes easier and easier. You know, it's like anything else. You uh, When you work at the being level, you're so much better at things than if you're working from the intellectual level. So if you sit down in front of those five screens with the intellect, you say, well, look at that one a little, and that one a little, and that one, you kind of go through them like that. But that isn't the way you want to do it. You want to just look at them, and the stuff comes in, and you put it in, <coughs> you put it in the right basket as it comes in. Uh, what do we call it? We call that getting in the zone. You know, When you're in the zone, you're working from your being level. You know, I've had painters out here working on my house, and they will they won't use tape. They won't tape down the side of a window glass so they don't get any paint on the glass. They don't need that. They dad they reach up, they put their brush up there to this perfectly straight. Paint goes right over to the glass, stops, and no tape needed. They get in the zone. They're not really aware of the rest of their world. Their world is the thing they're painting, their brush. And the can of paint. All the rest of the world's disappeared. And when you get in that zone, you can function 
so much better. When you learn to type, if you use your intellect, you say, okay, where's the E, where's the T? Oh yeah, the Q's up there. You can't type very well. You have to let all that go. Get your intellect out of it. And your fingers just know where to go. You see things and your fingers just work. That's getting in the zone. Athletes, if you're a good athlete, you do not do your sport with your intellect. You know, if you're, if you're throwing that javelin, you don't say, okay, I got to hold it here and I do that. Now I'm going to turn around and put my foot here and I'll put my foot there. If you're doing that, you'll never be very good at it. You have to practice it so much that you don't have to think about it anymore. Your body just does it. And then you get much better at it. Thinking about things, second guessing, is this right now? Is that right? Maybe I should do this and that. It keeps you muddled and, and confused all the time. So that's what I mean by getting in the zone. And it's the same in getting in that being level. You see, it's the same thing when you're, when you're, when you get out of your intellect into your being level, you are in the zone, if you will, of being, of accepting, of being open, of connecting. <clears throat> and at that level, you just process things very efficiently. You look at those five screens and you're really looking at all five of them at the same time. And if something interesting happens in any one of them, your attention is drawn there. So it's not really like you're spending 20% of your time each one, like a raster scan. You're really just looking at them, getting in the data, and your attention is going wherever it's needed. <clears throat> if one game is really at an exciting point, you might have 80% of your attention there and the 20s spread over the rest of them. And that just happens naturally without you trying to do it out of your head. If you try to do it out of your intellect, it's very limited.